welcome. I'm Dr. Ritter here at Miami-Dade College. In the studio now, we're going to be starting in the studio for a whole new show. This is a brand new show we're bringing just for you. It's called The Final Frontier. We are actually going to be highlighting uh, courses, disciplines, events going on in the STEM field. STEM is science, technology, engineering, and math. Don't turn off the TV yet. Okay, we will try to make it interesting. We're going to try to tell you the things going on here. Today's show you might find a little interesting. We're going to be talking about biotechnology. I have my guest here. Introduce yourself, please. Hi, my name is Alfredo Leon. I'm a professor of biotechnology at the Science Complex. Okay, uh, he is the biotechnology instructor. I know what is biotechnology. I want to know, what is well, biotechnology? Biotechnology is using biological processes for our benefit. So for instance, when that huge spill happened at the Gulf of Mexico, what they used instead of using chemicals, in many cases what they used were biological agents, things that were not added to the environment and that would pick up whatever chemical spills were happening over there. But how is this biotechnology? Well, we use bacteria, yeast. Well, I'll start with the basics. The oldest biotechnology in the world beer and bread making. The use of a yeast, a simple organism, unicellular organism, where we use the processes that they do in their normal life for our purpose, making bread. I'm confused though. I always thought biotechnology was taking a gene from something and put it in something else. Well, How is this biotechnology? We do that too, where we can actually grab genes from organisms or things that may not be present in another organism, take that, isolate it, make it interesting, do what they show in shows like House and NCIS, and okay. we're actually going to put them in other foods, for instance. And that way, when you eat the rice or eat the, drink the milk, you can actually get these nutrients. So yes, that is also biotechnology. Biotechnology is a lot of things. It's not just one thing. Okay, so biotechnology can be anything from uh, creating new organisms to baking bread. As long as you're using something that is alive, or was alive, and use its things, its bio biology for your purpose, you're good. Okay, now, are there jobs in this? There are many jobs, South Florida being one of the places that it's starting to grow in that. Um, you can do multiple things. You can work in crime scene investigation. You can work in research labs. Okay, stop for a moment. You're running down a list here. Tell me a little bit about, okay, let's suppose crime scene investigation. Everyone, all these CSI shows. Okay. So, so crime scene, what would, how does biotechnology tie into CSI? Very simple. You know when they do the whole show and right at the middle they do that montage where the guy puts on the lab coat, goes to the lab, they play the music, 80s rock songs and they start pipetting stuff, mm -hmm. that's biotechnology. Although okay. it doesn't take five minutes to do, these uh, scientists and these technicians, what they're doing is that they are breaking down the information from either samples that they're getting from either crime scenes, skin, semen, things that are present, things that are biological, getting their information, be it through DNA or other molecules, and analyzing and then just matching them up. What are the steps, so, I and mean, what does a person do? They go collect some blood and you're done? Well, actually, you can do multiple steps and there's multiple techniques. In fact, here at Miami-Dade campus, um, North Campus, we have multiple of these uh, machines. But tell with me. CSI, you tell me, what, what do they do? What's so, going on? But you always see they collect from the crime scene and then they, have, then, then they come out and say, oh yeah, you did it, uh, with paternity tests. Well, for instance, for paternity tests, we all have different markers. We all have different sequences that make us unique. Although you and I are humans, I would hope, um, we have things that make us unique and individual to each other. Such as? Such as particular sequences, particular genes. Sequences, tell me. Well, the DNA is, uh, the DNA is formed by molecules. They're called nucleotides. And there's different types of nucleotides, chemical um, molecules. Okay. And the organization of those chemical molecules is what makes you, you, and me, me. Now, how mine are arranged and how yours are arranged are similar in certain areas, that's what makes us both humans, and what makes dogs dogs and cats cats, but the particularities of where these molecules are placed is what makes Steve Steve and Alfredo Alfredo. Okay, so in the lab, what, how do they read this? Well, in the lab, depending on what molecule they get, so for instance, if they get a cell, a skin cell, hair sa sample, sa uh, saliva, all those samples have cells in them. What we do is we break those cells apart, 
get that DNA, which there's multiple copies of them, inside a sample of saliva or a sample of skin or mm -hmm. a sample of hair. Um, and what they do is that then they analyze, they look for the sequence. And when I say sequence, what I mean is the arrangement of these chemicals, how they are. Okay, do you actually have students doing this? We actually have students doing okay, this. Okay, which one? Uh, I think we're gonna show Mercedes showing Mercedes her Mercedes is the one yes. actually, okay. Can we please go to that video and let's, let's see. Let's look at the video. The DNA sequencer is important because based on the research that I am doing, I plan to clone and sequence the large subunit of Rubisco for my plant, Martiformis. This will be important when I want to analyze the genetic um, differences between each palm which were assigned to other colleagues of mine. Um, this is important because when we want to analyze differences between suspects or anything else, let's say plants, two different plants, this is viable especially in the research that we are doing here at Miami Dade College. Okay, so I saw basically the equipment, how she uses it, but I'm still I want to know more. Well, okay, so virtually, okay, I see what a student is doing in the lab. Okay. Okay, that's equipment-wise. Are you presently working on any projects? Yes. Uh, actually, you're working with me, so you need to work Dang. on... Dang! Okay, you're right, I am. You need to work on that memory <laughs> thing. So what we're doing is that we're using all these techniques, all this equipment that Mercedes showed us, and we are diversifying, looking at different projects. What these projects are doing is that they're exploiting many of the techniques that we can do in biotechnology. Mm -hmm. So there are some basic techniques in biotechnology that everyone should know. Everyone should know how to extract DNA. Everyone should know how to amplify DNA. Everyone should know very basic techniques that it doesn't matter if you're a technician in a research laboratory, if you're a technician in a laboratory here at um, MDC or if you're a technician at UM or any of these research mm -hmm. laboratories, you need to have the basic foundations. These basic techniques will help you in any of the jobs that are available in biotechnology. We are doing science mm -hmm. right here. Uh, we are doing research. One of the projects that we're doing is basically taking chloroplasts, which is an organelle, a particularity that all plants have, and what they do is that they use this organelle to do photosynthesis. That is why they're green. Although there are plants that do photosynthesis and are not green. I know that you were already looking at me. Not like me. I yeah. wasn't going to say a word. Okay. <laughs> so these uh, organelles can actually pick up energy from the sun and transform it into energy that they store to eventually use. And that is our lovely sugars. That's our lovely potatoes. That's mm -hmm. our lovely sweet potatoes. Um, that we cannot make our food, but they, we can actually get that from them. So what we are doing is that we are using and we are uh, techniques uh, that are more in the biochemical sort of way. So they're not just, as you can see, it's bio, biotechnology is a large field mm -hmm. that has different subfields. So if a person is interested in, in, let's say, for instance, chemistry, and they're not that f fond of biology, mm -hmm. they can focus more on that um, biochemistry part. Um, if a student is more interested in other fields, then they can move into other particularities. But like I was mentioning, mm -hmm. um, for the organo, what we're doing is more biochemistry. We're isolating it. We're looking at how to get from the plant, from a leaf, a palm leaf actually, um, how can we get most of that chloroplast? Okay. Not to interrupt you, don't we have students that are, that are working on that yes. presently? And so why not have them tell us about sure. it? Sure. Here's Brian talking to us about it. Okay, let's see. Hi, I am Brian Lee Lavoie, Haitian descent, raised in Miami, Florida. I am a senior at Miami Dade College bachelor's program, majoring in biological sciences with a concentration in biopharmaceutical. Here at MDC, I'm currently taking part in research along with my fellow colleagues and the biotechnology program. The specifics of my group assignment was to optimize the extraction procedure using one particular sable palm, sable palm dominogensis which we modified a procedure where they extract chloroplasts from spinach. My individual assignment is to now standardize this newly modified protocol where I will compare results using sable palm dominogensis as my control and compare results from various different palms varying from size of pellet 
color of supernatant, texture of leaf, and total amount of chloroplasts, which will finally determine how effective our newly modified protocol really is compared to different palm trees in our MDC palmadium. Our research is overseen by Dr. Stephen Ritter and Professor Alfredo Leon. Okay, so that's interesting seeing what he's doing. Uh, so he's working with palms. Yes. And isolating chloroplast. Yes. For what purpose? Well, when there's many types of, of, of plants and each plant, like us, have many different characteristics. Mm -hmm. Some are stronger, some are more fleshy. Many of the information out there right now is how to get those chloroplasts from the fleshy ones, how to get it from spinach, how to get it from simpler plants. Mm -hmm. When you look at a, a leaf from a, from a palm tree, it's not simple at all. In fact, it's very strong. So procedures that we normally do for things like spinach are not as simple to do with things like palms. Mm -hmm. So what Brian is doing is that he is actually looking to form a, a procedure to do in all types of palm. Here at North Campus, we have about 250, 300 species of mm -hmm. palms. So what he did was they started with one, they made that procedure best as, as they could. And now what they're going to do is that they're going to compare with other palms. Okay, Stephanie did another palm, correct? Yes, Stephanie actually worked with Yapa, but Stephanie worked in another project. Doing? What Stephanie is doing, like I was mentioning, um, she's more into the biological. So she's actually combining things that Mercedes was mentioning, like the sequencing. She's looking at the chloroplast once it's isolated by the techniques that Brian mentioned. She's going to break that up. And like I mentioned with the CSI things, they're going to get the DNA from the chloroplast and look at the particularities of the sequences. I think that we should look at the okay, video. Okay, yeah, let's see Stephanie, then I have a bunch of questions to ask. Sure. Hi, my name is Stephanie Diaz, and I'm currently a senior in Miami-Dade College's Bachelor's of Science program with a concentration in biopharmaceutical sciences. Currently, I am working in Professor Leon and Dr. Ritter's lab, where we are working with palms and their chloroplasts. We have approximately 300 species of palms in our palmetum, and palms have a variety of uses, which is why we're working with them. We're going to be isolating their chloroplasts. Chloroplasts are an organelle that functions in photosynthesis. As humans, we cannot make our own food, but palms can. They undergo a process called photosynthesis where they take carbon from the air and incorporate them into organic molecules in order to make sugar um, as their food. Uh, we are going to be basically isolating the chloroplast in order to look at their DNA. So once we extract the DNA from the chloroplast, we'll be looking at a gene that codes for the enzyme of Rubisco. Rubisco is actually a protein that takes the carbon from the air and incorporates it into the organic molecules in order to eventually make the sugar. Once we amplify that gene through polymerase chain reaction, we will run it through a machine that sequences the gene. After we sequence the gene, we can compare those genes that encode for the Rubisco for the different types of palms that we have in the palmetum. This will tell us a little bit more about their evolutionary relationships and also help us to understand the biodiversity that we see in the world with all of these palms as well as in our very own palmetum. Okay, it's great seeing that, yeah, we have students working. How did they learn how to do this? Well, they can learn it in multiple courses, um, biotechnology being the first one. In biotechnology, they can learn their basic techniques um, that will teach them how to isolate DNA, how to run DNA, how to analyze DNA, how to differentiate one DNA from another DNA. So if a person decides they want to pursue a career in biotechnology, you said there are biotech industries that they can work for here. They can get a job for police. Yes, actually, they can work. What for, type? What job? Tell me job opportunities. Well, there are different job opportunities depending, again, in the in the field. Um, the people that are working in crime scene investigation, they can be the ones that are working in the collecting the data in the field. Okay. There could be the people that collect the data and analyze the data in the laboratories. Mm -hmm. Besides those in the crime scene and and, and crime area, there's other research also that can be done. For instance, uh, medical research, uh, science, uh, basic science research can also be done mm -hmm. either at University of Miami. And they're all Florida. jobs for that Those are here. all jobs Locally? that are, yes, they're oh, present here okay. in South Florida. And also, um, I don't know if you've heard about it, but there's actually Scripps, the mm -hmm. research institute higher up in Florida. Um, I think it's in Jupiter. Also, I was told USDA. USDA is also a great uh, place for jobs. It's a government agency which not only has uh, 
base of points here in, in Florida, but it also mm -hmm. has it around the United States. Okay, so we have people now, there are job opportunities. Tell me about the program. Well, you start with either an AES, if you're interested in, in working uh, and getting the basic skills to get a job, that would be an Associates in Science, where you would take basic courses in chemistry, biology, biotechnology, and more specific courses depending on what the interest is. Is it nicely set up so a student comes and they know like the first semester I take, the second semester I take that, or do they have to? Uh... Yes, it is. It's okay. very simple. If they, can, if they want to contact me, they just come to my office. We plan it out based on what they have already because many students come in with already classes that they have mm -hmm. taken. Other students have uh, need to start fresh. What background does a person need? Any background. There any are, background? Any background. All they need is the interest. So we can take a person that just graduated from high school and turn them into a biotechnician? Yes, we can in about two years. Wow. Okay, so and after the two years, they should be able to get a job? They should get, be able to get a job, but if they're interested in continuing their career, Miami-Dade College also provides the bachelor's in science with a focus in biotechnology. Okay, so what do you do for the bachelor's level? At the bachelor's level, the students gain more courses more specific towards the biology. Such as? Such as genetics, biochemistry, um, evolution, and microbiology. Those courses will prepare the students then to take a third biotechnology course where they incorporate all this information where they actually be, are part of a project. So it's not just doing labs to do okay. labs. So you mentioned, so the students we saw are doing projects, how did they get involved? Well, they got involved through communication with us. They came in, they showed their interest, mm -hmm. and they told us that they wanted to participate. So anyone can do that? Anyone can come up. So actually at Miami Dade College, the person can go here and not only take classes, but they can also do research under a faculty member. Yes, they can do research, they can take their classes, and their federal uh, grants that will help the student along the way with stipends, trips, and presentations. Many, oh, of, these, many mm -hmm. of these students have actually traveled um, in Florida, outside of Florida, to present their work. So it's not just doing things here and just keeping it here. They actually go out and present and they see what other scientists are doing. Mm. Once they graduate with their bachelor's, they are prepared to either go into medicine, dental, nursing, um, graduate school if they want to continue the sciences, or even get a job. So graduate school, where would they go if they're interested in graduate school? Can you stay local? Do you have to go elsewhere? If, if they're interested to do graduate school, um, there are programs in many of the universities here in South Florida, but there are also programs outside of Florida. Many of the major universities have graduate programs where they mm -hmm. can apply to. Do students have to do research? They don't have to, but it's highly suggested. When you're working in this type of field, it's the practical that counts. Mm -hmm. Although the practice needs the theory, which is what they learn in their labs and in their classes, once they go into the, their own project, they start exploring different things. They start learning new techniques. They start interacting with other students in a different sense. Okay, so basically come here, talk to you, get into the program. That sounds great. Okay, well, I'm just saying we're, we're getting no, no, there. No, no, yeah. Okay, uh, let's run down. Let's suppose I'm a freshman, I'm coming to college. I decide I want to do biotechnology. What am I going to do the first semester? The first semester, students would be taking classes like uh, Intro to Chemistry, um, which is uh, very basic chemistry. They would also be taking Biotech 1. Um, these classes also have lab laboratories which prepare the student to um, in the future courses. Let's suppose I work. It's flexible. There are classes in the morning. There's some classes at night. Um, they can mix and match. So I can also work and still get the degree? Most definitely. Wow. And research. And research. And travel. How about the equipment we have in the lab? Old, antiquated? All the equipment in the lab is state of the art. That building there is beautiful. Really? We have, we have equipment that is not available in many other places. Such as? We have the, the sequencer. Not only the sequencer that Mercedes showed, but we actually have a sequencer that can do the whole human genome in just four days. Explain why that's impressive. Okay. That is, <laughs> that is impressive because when the whole conversation about doing the genome and sequencing the genome and what did the genome say, it took years. It took multiple people to get that information out there. And that took years. And that took years. Wow. So we can now do it in days. four days. Terrific. Okay. So, and ultimately the research we're doing with POMS 
that is an ultimate goal to do it with palms? Well, we are starting with the with a group of palms, the sable palms, and we are hoping to move into then other groups of palms. Um, once we move into those palms, we'll get the information, not just of the chloroplast, not of the mitochondria, which is another organelle. They are smaller that look very similar to bacteria, but we also want to see the genome, the whole, what makes the whole palm. Mm -hmm. And once we have that, we can then start doing great things because we see and when we know where the genes are, what they do, what they work. Why? Palms actually have many functions that are not just looking pretty in our environment. Such as? Well, Palms in, in, in some places are used actually for bioremediation, like I said at the mm -hmm. beginning of the show, um, where they are placed there and they pick up many of, of whatever chemicals are mm -hmm. affecting the environment. Um, they're products for food, they're products for textiles. Palms have multiple purposes. If we can get some of that information, maybe put it somewhere else, maybe exploit that particular information, the world is ours. Oh, okay. So basically, uh, so are we, you planning on doing anything besides palms, working, possibly doing any other research, or that will keep you occupied? That will keep me occupied for a long time. Okay. So basically, we will become the palm mecca. Yes, we will. Uh, wonderful. Okay. So uh, let's see. Let, 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 me, let me try to summarize everything. Glean from what you told me. Okay. So a student can come here, uh, come talk to you. Yes. To see, first of all, if the program will suit them. Yes. Then you can tell them what's required. Possibly research. Start immediately after the first semester, second semester. We can work with the student. If the student has some research experience, it's great because they bring something to the table already. If they don't, that doesn't mean that we can't work with them. Okay, so a student comes, talks to you, then they go register, then they get started, and you work with them through the entire process. Yes. And they have to put up with me for part of the time. Well, we I know. Do. You can't have everything in I life. know. Okay. Well, I want to thank all of you for tuning in and watching the first episode of Final Frontier. I hope to come up, well, I hope we have a bunch of different uh, episodes, different STEM uh, disciplines to be talking about. Thank you very much. Have a good day and come see us. Biotechnology, the wave of the future.